guys, welcome back to another Default Cube CG Matter tutorial, and I recently saw an effect on the uh, Blender subreddit on Reddit that I thought would be cool to recreate, and because all my tutorials are taking too long, I made myself a pizza as incentive, so I cannot eat this until the tutorial is done. So first of all, uh, what am I even talking about? What, what subreddit post, whatever. So first of all, let me show you this. I thought it was super cool, so I just wanted to make this video. I wasn't planning to make this video. So you could probably imagine it's not this top post, but it's a, and it's not the advertisement, but it's this right here and we can make that full screen. Uh, so it's this loading animation. I just thought it was a cool idea. So it's, you know, a loading animation that's buffering, but in reality it's occupying its time by going into the, you know, Z, Z dimension, right? So the idea is we take this animation and I don't know, we basically make this and it turns out that it's super easy. So Again, just make sure you understand what's going on here. We have this thing sweeping, and then if you look at it from like the front view, it just look it looks like it's buffering. Okay, I don't, <laughs> I do not need to explain that to you. Let me show you how to make it. So we are gonna open up Blender and make that full screen because that is the first thing I always need to remember to do. And we are gonna start off by creating a plane, which we need to resize to actually be like the loading bar strip. So tab for edit mode, we are gonna scale this. So it's very thin and then we can lengthen it. So it's, you know, about that long. So from the top view, that's about the length of the loading bar, maybe a bit longer. Okay, there we go. And now we wanna make it into the 3D version first. So before we do the normal 2D version, which is what we have right now, we want the version with the depth. And to do this, we're just gonna add some loop cuts. That's control R. And with this method, it's arbitrary where you put them. It doesn't really matter. So I'm just gonna put one here. I can put one here, just dividing this into sections. We can add more later. So let's say that we want to use this to turn it into a 3D, you know, extrusion. What we do is we just select one of these faces, E for extrude, and then Z axis in this case. So something like that. And then we just delete these extra faces, which gives us this nice strip. And we can also, we can also do that again. So let's do it here and here. And we can take this face. Again, this is just random. It doesn't look exactly like the original. We are just making an arbitrary one. And let's do one more just so we can see a couple loading buffer regions. So let's extrude this one up, down. Doesn't matter. Let's do down. Okay. Boom. So we now have our strip, which, you know, is 3D. But then from the top view, it kind of has that uh, 2D lack of depth kind of thing going on. So the first thing we want to tackle is how to make the green, you know, progress sweep across it because it's not as simple as just going across. It also has to travel down and up. So first of all, let me show you the approach that you might use, which might be going to shading. And then we create a material for this. And then it doesn't really matter what we use as a BSDF. All that really matters is we use some kind of, it could be a texture coordinates or it can be, you know, geometry node with position. So the normal approach would be something like this. We take our position and separate it into its, I'm trying to separate it into its components. In this case, we are going along the X axis, as you can see, this is the X axis. So if we look at X over here, uh, you can see that effectively this has divided right from left, which means if we add in a math node and having it set to add is fine, we can basically sweep across this. You know, it looks kind of weird because it's faded, but this is the basic idea. But the problem with this, and you'll see, look at how it's gonna travel down here. The problem with this is it instantly jumps down there. It doesn't actually sweep since it's just going along the x-axis and all of this face is on the same portion of the x-axis. So really we just kind of want to imagine it from this top view. So this is why it's a bad approach. It doesn't consider this uh, z depth. So instead we need something that is a bit smarter. And to do that, instead of using, you know, generated coordinates or what did I just say, I used position. We're gonna use uh, UV maps is probably the best way to do this. So UV editing, uh, we are gonna give this an unwrap even though it already has a pretty bad one. Um, so just select everything, U, unwrap, it should already be in strip form for you. And you can either have this go vertically or horizontally, it doesn't matter which, but you just need to remember uh, which you actually picked and that pizza is looking tempting. So let's finish up. Uh, in this case, we have it vertical. So that means Y axis. Now we're going to go back to shading. This time we are going to add a texture coordinates. 
and we can use UV. So let's just put in our UV to the surface. And then we also want to separate this again, separate X, Y, Z, even though it doesn't have a Z component. So again, we are not really interested in X. We only care about Y since our UV map, which I can show in this corner. If I go to edit mode, you can see it is, uh, it's vertical. So that's Y axis again. So you can see how this is, well, let, let me show you. Let me show you that now it act. What am I even saying? Let me show you that now it accounts for the depth as well. It doesn't just sweep from left to right. So we're gonna do the same thing as before. We're gonna add in a math node with add. And then let's set this to zero. And then we can start sweeping. Now the issue with this is it's kind of hard to tell what's going on since it's so faded out. So I'm just going to, we could either use a greater than or we can just use color ramp, might be more intuitive. I just wanna make sure you understand the theory behind this. So we're gonna set it to constant. And then we are gonna take our second handle, which is the white handle and bring it down. There you go. And you can see now when we change this add value, it's actually sweeping up. So it's taking time to do that, which means that if we look at it from the top view and we're now gonna sweep, you can see it kind of buffers. So I'm trying to uh, you know, slide this slider at a constant speed and you can see it's actually buffering in some regions. And to make that buffering take longer, we just you know, uh, move them more in uh, Z space. We, we display some more and then we might have to unwrap again. But okay, so this is the general idea. So we already have this nice setup and now we just need to turn it into something that looks nicer. So uh, what we can do is, I think we're just gonna use a mission cause that's what it looked like in the GIF that we saw on Reddit. So we're not gonna do any BSDF stuff. Um, so what we can do is we can just use a mix RGB. One of the colors is gonna be white. One of the colors is gonna be green. So white means not loaded, green means loaded. So first of all, uh, hook this up to the factor and then this to the surface. And I don't know which one we need to be green. I guess we'll find out in a second. If we make this one green, then yes, it's going this way, right? I think so. I think that should work. And again, we have this issue of the fall off and I guess I shouldn't have deleted uh, that color ramp because it seemed pretty useful. Again, you can do this with a, um, a greater than or a less than with the uh, math but let's just move this over. Okay. So it doesn't really matter where it is because we're going to be controlling it with this uh, slider over here. And you can see with our setup right now, when it's at around 0.84, it's all the way not loaded. And then we just bring this downwards in this case. And you can have it go the other way by inverting, but this should be fine. And let's do a quick save just in case we get a crash and I can't get my pizza. So we can call this uh, loading. Okay, so that is our basic setup. I guess we can use Eevee. Do we have a camera? We do not have a camera. So let's add a camera. Camera. And then we want to make sure we are viewing it. And then make sure this is set to lock camera to view. That way when you uh, look around the viewport, the camera is going to move with you. And I'm just going to choose some random, you know, something like this, something that kind of looks like the GIF. Yeah, that looks fine. Okay, there we go. And now let's look at a rendered view. So again, in the shading workspace, we can control this, but for now we just wanna uh, work on how this looks like in the render. So right now uh, we get something like this, but what made it look so cool uh, in the original is that it had this nice black outline. And the fastest way to do that in either Cycles or Eevee probably is to go to the render tab, go to freestyle, and you're just gonna enable that. I think these settings should be fine. And let's see what that looks like so far. Okay, so that's cool. It gives us our nice outline, but it gives us one, uh, you know, going across it, whereas we just want it not <laughs> going across it. Uh, to fix that, go to the layers, I believe. Yeah, view layer properties, and then under freestyle, which is enabled, which means we can mess with this. Uh, we want to disable, we want to disable crease, I believe, because this is a crease where it's showing up. So let's see. Yes, yeah, so now it is not showing up in the crease and it's kind of flat shaded, which is what it looked like in the original. Okay, cool. So we have this motorcycle people, what are you doing? Okay, so we have this and we also want a second version that is flat and doesn't have this depth, but does take time to load. And because we already have this nice setup, all we have to do, all we have to do is we need to duplicate this and I'm just gonna move it over. And I want this in a nice position. So something like that. Then we're gonna to go to edit mode and then scale this. 
on the z-axis, so that's you know this axis, and we're going to type in 0, which puts everything on the same plane. Okay, so now we have a flat version, a uh, version with depth, and they should be progressing at the same rate, except for the fact that one is buffering, so let's just check that. Again, we only care about this value, so maybe we can turn this into a group, just so that we don't need to look at most of this. So we are going to select all of this, control G, now it is a group, meaning that all we really care about is this value, and let's see how this is looking. Okay, so let's start from the beginning. So they start at the same time. Now, yes, it is working perfectly. Yeah, so again, look at the uh, flat version over here. I'm going to try to slide this at a constant rate. You see how it's pausing at those areas. It might be better for me to actually animate this <laughs> instead of sliding it smoothly. Uh, so let's have it be, you know, a three-second animation at 30 FPS. So 30 FPS, three seconds would then be 90 frames. Uh, we'll have this start off at, I guess, this. So nothing's loaded. Keyframe, that's I. Go to the last frame, and then we need to move this all the way down. Keyframe, set the interpolation to linear, I guess. But you could pick something else, and let's see what that looks like. Yeah, there you go. And you can see it's uh, buffering in all the right places. Okay, so now let's just get a random render on this frame, let's say. Okay, that looks cool. Um, I guess the last thing we need to do is add in our loading text, which didn't have anything special. It was just text that said loading. And the way we do that, now it might have some issues with freestyle, we'll see. Uh, Shift A, look for some text. Edit mode lets us edit the text. We'll call it loading. And I'm not going to mess with the font or anything, you know. You can find whatever font you want. Let's go to the top view again. Position it somewhere there. Is that big enough? It's too big. And I want it going right on this corner, or lining up with this uh, beginning line. Something like that. Okay, cool. And now the only issue is, I would say this white isn't white enough, and the text is gray. So we need to take care of that. So shading workspace. In here, let's open up our group. And this, I never changed to white, so it's still some kind of gray. So let's bump that up to white. And then for our loading, we can create a new material. Again, we're just using emission, so no need for BSDFs. Just take an RGB, or actually we could take a value. Might even be smarter. Let's take a value, since we're just doing white. So we're just gonna put that in there, and you can see, if you look at this loading text, this affects the brightness, kind of. We're gonna keep this at one. We are also going to change to standard and when i change to standard i want you to notice what happens to the white it should change yeah now it's perfectly uh bright in terms of white and now let's see what the render looks like okay that looks pretty good um i would say that the freestyle line is kind of clipping into this a bit too much and we can either fix that by picking a different font or you could also in the freestyle options uh you can change this thickness so let's do half a pixel should be half as thick yeah, now you can see we have a thinner line. No, let's do something a bit more, but not as much as one. Render. Okay, that looks cool. And I guess that is our basic setup. Oh, I guess this was already keyframed, right? Yeah. So no need to mess with that. And if we want, we could even have this loading text turn green as this swipes across it. That might be cool. Okay, I don't think the original had that, but I'm just going to add it even though I want this pizza real bad. Mm. Okay, I'll do it. I'll do it. Whatever. Um, to do this, we're going to do a very similar setup, but this time we don't need to mess with the UVs. We can just do the original approach. approach. Uh, so let's do... Uh, we could do position. So that's a geometry node. It might make more sense to do generated coordinates or something, but position is fine. So let's put that in the surface. We only want... So separate, we only want the x. Again, this is going along the x direction. And then let's add in math, add, and then we basically need to find the point where we can see a difference here. So there you go, just trying to, there you go. Now we see that nice gradient. And then of course we need to have some cutoff and this time I'm gonna, and by that I mean no interpolation. Uh, this time I'm gonna use the greater than less than method so let's do this um, 
Is it greater than? Greater than 0.1, let's say. So something like that. So now we can have that without any of the interpolation. Okay, cool. But we kind of want it going the other way. Okay, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Uh, so let's send this through a mix RGB. We basically need to invert it, but I'm not really explaining what I'm talking about. Uh, we want this side to be white. Whoops, needs to be in the factor. We want this side to be white. Maybe it's this one. Yes, and we want the other side to be green. And to get the same shade of green, I just picked a frame that has some green, and we are going to use this eyedropper tool, and that should be the same shade. And I'm just going to hand animate this, although we could probably get it literally perfect by taking data from uh, this object, but that's fine. Uh, so on frame one, it should be nowhere, or the green should not be seen. So something like that, keyframe, and then we're just going to see how many frames it takes for us to get past the G. <laughs> Sounds like a rap song or something. Okay, so at this frame, it should be somewhere like there. Keyframe, and again, this was in, uh, in linear space, so we should make sure this is also in linear. So now let's check that. It's probably not perfect, but it's looking pretty good. It looks pretty synced up, uh, which means basically what we did here is this. So, you know, we got that buffering. We also have the loading turn green. That's just a small detail. And whenever we render this, we also get those nice edges. So that is how you do the loading animation. Um, I guess I'm trying to remember. I think the background of it was white, not gray. So let's just do that. And then I think we're done. So world tab. Uh, again, none of this environment is affecting any of our objects because it doesn't have BSDF. So effectively, we're just picking a background color without messing any of the lighting interactions. Again, it's EV, so it matters even less. But we can do white, I believe. That seems a bit crazy. Let's see what that looks like. No, I think that that is what it looked like. I'm, I can't remember, but I think it was. So now let's see a first frame. Yeah, so that has only the outline. And then as we get to green, kind of looks horrible in the viewport, but in render, it looks pretty good. So now let's just do a render of this. I'm just going to save that. And we are rendering 90 frames. FFmpeg, I want it to be a video immediately. And let's see, is our composition good? Our composition's good. It's a bit off, which means we need to move our camera a little. So let's just move it in terms of view. Or yeah, it's called view. So I want X axis to be relative to the viewport, like where I'm looking at right now. So G, X, G, Y. If you don't know what I'm doing right now, it's not that important. I'm just repositioning the camera. Save that, FFmpeg encoding. I like MP4 because that's what works on YouTube. And then, yeah, H.264, high quality. These are the details that don't matter, so let's kind of gloss over them. Finally, I need an output path. Fastest tutorial yet. And control F12. Okay, so I'm not going to eat the pizza. Eh, I'll, I'll eat one bite. I'll eat one bite on uh, make it a mukbang, mukbang. You hear that? Nice and crunchy, which I know a lot of people don't like, but who doesn't like crunchy crust? Don't worry, guys. We're on frame 45. It's almost over. I was in the kitchen putting this in the oven, and I'm like, usually I do a lot of takes, even though this is less organized than the CG Matter tutorial. Usually I do a lot of takes because I stutter. And not that I stutter, I, I'm too afraid to start, like I'll get a sentence into it. I'm like, oh no, I can do better. I don't want to start off with a bad sentence. But this time I'm like, I'm just going to sit down, put my pizza down and just do it first take. And that's what happened. So let's see our final, whoops, let's see our final result. Which again should play normally, but I'm going to use VLC just to get that nice playback. Let's make that full screen. So again, I want you to notice a couple things. I want you to notice, you know, the outline and the nice flat shading kind of thing going on. I want you to notice that the buffering should be happening in the right places. And we kind of, it's not procedural, but we have the nice workflow that lets us do any kind of, you know, you could extrude it like a hundred times in between. So it has a lot of buffering. 
but all you have to do is scale it to zero for the other one. It's the same idea. And we also have that nice loading thing, which I don't know if the original had. Let's see if ours looks better than the original. Let's open up uh, Chrome. I'm going to browse as a guest. And then what am I looking for? I'm looking for reddit.com slash r slash blender. See if we did it better than the original. You know, we also need to do a tutorial on this, although it is insane. Look at that fluid simulation, texturing a little. I don't know if that was volumetrics there. It kind of looks like it. And then hair simulation. It's pretty cool. I got to see this. This one kind of has a cool aesthetic, but I say our workflow is cleaner. But I guess uh, they wrote loading twice and had the dot, dot, dot. Whatever. Uh, I think we did a good attempt, really. The, the rest of it's just style, but now you know the workflow for it. Again, VLC is better. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I have a Patreon. It's very helpful if you want to um, fund my tutorials because that is the best way to do that. So it's helpful for me and it's helpful for you because you get a bunch of benefits. Um, and soon a new benefit that is coming is I'm going to start putting everybody's uh, name who is a Patreon patron. I'm going to put them in the CG Matter videos as well. So that's a new thing coming up. So you heard it here first. There you go. Uh, I've been rambling long enough. See you guys.